And so that's skidding. The process of skidding involves the dragging of logs. As I mentioned, there's um, another there's another way of moving moving cut trees from the woods to the deck or to the landing. Um, it's referred to as forwarding. The term forwarding implies that nothing is being dragged. It's the whole tree is suspended um, on a machine. So instead of dragging something out of the woods, you're driving it out of the woods on the on the back of, of something. Um, you're carrying the logs from the stump to the landing. And so forwarders are either rubber tired machines or, or track mounted machines. The logs are typically already processed in the woods. And what that means is they're limbed and they're topped and they're cut to log length in the woods. And as, as I mentioned before, the two ways that that occurs are either by hand, you have somebody who cuts the tree by hand with a chainsaw, limbs it, tops it, and cuts it to length with a chainsaw, or you're utilizing one of those uh, cut to length processors, right? You have a machine that can do all that work that the logger would, would typically do manually. Feller bunchers aren't normally used in cut to length systems, and typically trees that are cut by a harvester are not forwarded out of the woods because you need log lengths t for forwarding to work. The, the logs are carried or full, you know, they're fully suspended on the back of a machine and driven out of the woods. And as you can imagine, if used appropriately, this can lessen the impact of the tree removal because you're not dragging something along the ground, you're just, uh, you're just driving it out. This is an example of, of what a forwarder looks like. Uh, as you can tell, everything on the back of that forwarder is, has been processed. It's been cut into 16 foot lengths, it's been limbed, and it's been topped. This can either occur with uh, a chainsaw operator or with a cut to length processor. Uh, but for things to be forwarded out, typically they need to be um, already processed. Cable yarding is a system in which the trees are, are cut in the woods and the logs are lifted and carried along a suspended cable overhead from the stump to the landing. It utilizes a, a stationary uh, a machine referred to as the cable yarder um, that consists of a tower with a drum winch. Uh, so what this, you know, a system like this is typically used in areas like the Pacific Northwest where there is stained steep ground. Um, it's becoming more common here in the, the southern Appalachians, I think. The U.S. Forest Service is, uh, is, is trying to set up more of these operations on some of their steeper um, areas of steeper terrain in the southern Appalachians. And so the trees are cut and the logs are suspended from a carriage by a series of, of chokers um, or winched without a carriage back to the yarder. Um, if any of you guys have, have seen the show Axemen, <laughs> um, this is what they're doing out there in, in some of these western logging systems. And so I'll, sh I'll show you some images here that'll ma maybe make a little more sense. These two images here are of uh, cable logging systems. The, the diagram on the right is kind of a, a hypothetical diagram of a, of a skyline system. And you can see the, you know, the tower is set up on, you know, the, the tower yarder is set up on the deck. Um, you have um, a cable suspended from the tower across the harvesting unit with the, uh, with the carriage suspended from the cable. The trees are pre-cut and laying down in the woods. You have choker setters, uh, you know, loggers in the woods who wrap the chokers uh, around the logs. The, the carriage hauls the logs back up the slope where they're unloaded on the deck. Uh, the picture on the left is of a is is of a cable logging harvesting system in Northern California, um, an area of the country where these the, this type of system is commonly employed. Again, where you have steep ground, uh, really sustained steep ground, long stretches of of, of steep terrain where it would be. Uh, extremely difficult to get ground-based equipment in there and it would also be likely be, be more ecologically damaging to ha you know, try to build roads on ground that steep. So what is likely the, le the least common way that trees are removed from the woods once cut um, is flying uh, and 
what this amounts to is the you know the logs are are cut beforehand, and once they are cut and laying down on the ground, uh, a helicopter flies over. The helico the uh, pilot of the helicopter is communicating with loggers on the ground. The uh, a cable is suspended uh, from the helicopter. The logger on the ground cables up a log. Helicopter pulls it up and fly actually flies it to the um, to the deck. This type of system is really only suitable for a couple really select management scenarios. Um, you know, obviously it's pretty ecologically sensitive. You know, you don't have to build roads into anything. You're just you're basically flying everything out. But if you can imagine, uh, as you can imagine, it's a pretty expensive endeavor. The cost of helicopters are really expensive. So you can only do this if the wood value is really um, is really substantial. Um, so you have systems like the you know like this employed where you have wood that is in ecologically sensitive areas hard to access, um, but it also has to be really high quality material, really high value material, for this to be a feasible operation. Um, this uh, this type of system is used out west, um, but it has been, there have been portions of western North Carolina that have been logged with a helicopter before. Um, Again, where you have areas that are hard to get to, but are and and are ecologically sensitive, but the wood value allows it uh, to be a feasible a feasible thing. Now that we've covered some of the basics um, regarding how a tree is cut and how a tree is processed, how it's pulled out of the woods to the deck, um, I wanted to talk a little bit about some some ways that all these bits and pieces are combined to form common harvesting systems. So the first system we're going to look at is just a manual chainsaw cable skitter system and it's most commonly employed in uh, here in the southern Appalachians up in, the, up in New England, up in the Northeast and in the Lake state, States as well. And so as the, the name implies the trees are manually felled um, you know, they're cut by hand with a chainsaw. They're typically topped and delimbed with a chainsaw in the woods. Uh, the logs may be cut to length at the stump or skidded tree length to the landing. So if a tree is cut, topped, limbed, and cut to length, that's a cut to, this is, amounts to a manual cut to length system. If the tree is cut, topped, delimbed and then pulled out tree length, not log length. It's referred to as a tree length system. Um, but again, it, this type of system relies on uh, a logger with a chainsaw who cuts the trees, does some amount of processing in the woods, and then a cable skitter operator that cables those trees out to the deck. As you can imagine, this type of harvesting, harvesting system is really labor intensive. Um, you know, typically uh, it, it amounts to a three to five person crew. There's an investment in the chainsaws, there's an investment in the cable skitter, um, the loader on the deck. You know, there needs to be something that takes the trees off the ground and puts it on the truck. Um, and there's also the cost of the truck. It's a really versatile system. It's very important that the folks who are actually felling the trees can do so um, in a controlled way, right? The, the, it's the concept of directional felling, cutting the tree where you would like it to go, not where the tree wants to go. Um, laying out skid trails is really important in terms of having an adequate number but not having too many. Remember, our, the biggest impact, the biggest ecological impact you're going to have harvesting, harvesting trees is, um, is caused by putting in skid trails and, and roads. And so in order to minimize the ecological impact, some, some things you could do is uh, make sure that the skidder is pulling out small loads. Um, just because a, a skidder can pull out six trees at a time doesn't mean it should. Um, the smaller the lengths of material that are, that are coming out, the better. You know, pulling out logs is preferable to pulling out whole trees. Um, and again, the lighter the load, the lesser the impact. The second harvesting system that we're going to look at is um, the feller-buncher grapple-skitter system. 
And so in this instance, the trees are mechanically felled, uh, possibly several at a time, with some type of feller buncher. This image has a tracked feller buncher, uh, which is, you know, pretty nice because a machine like that can can reach with that boom, right? It can stay in place and reach out, cut trees, move it to where it needs to go. The, a wheeled feller buncher, typically you actually have to drive up to every tree to cut it, um, and that increases the increases the, the, the impact of the harvesting job. Um, so the trees are mechanically felled. Those bunches are left for the grapple skidder to come pick up. Uh, the trees are skidded out whole tree, right? So this is limbs, tops, and all. There's no part of this system that allows for the limbs to be cut off or the tops to be cut off. Um, so the whole tree comes out to the landing. At the landing, they're topped and delimbed with one of those delimbers we talked about, either a stroke delimber or a pull-through delimber. So roughly 70% of the logging operations in the southeastern United States utilize this system. It's really common in the coastal plain. Uh, it's really common in the Piedmont, and it's, it's, it's also a pretty common thing here in the southern Appalachians and western North Carolina, but only where the terrain lends itself to the use of these type of machines. Uh, typically, you can implement a greater range of, of silviculture uh, utilizing a track-mounted machine that has the ability to reach uh, where you don't have to actually drive up to every single tree, you have a greater ability to protect to protect understory vegetation. Um, so the uh, you know rubber tired feller bunchers kind of force the operator to drive up to every tree. Depending on what you're trying to do, this may or may not be a concern, but you have a lot of you have more options if that operator can cut trees and move it um, and place the tree where he'd like it to go as opposed to driving up to everything and, and dropping it where it get, where it, where it's cut. Uh, as you can imagine, there is a, a lot of capital investment required. Um, I'd say $500,000 is probably low. Um, it's probably it's it's a low estimate. Um, if you know depending on the feller buncher, depending on the skidder, you may have uh, you know your feller buncher may be close to to $400,000. Um, so you're talking about once you get everything accounted for, you're you're getting you're getting up to a million dollars or more in in equipment costs. Another uh, harvesting system that is common but less common than the other two previously described uh, is the cut to length system. You know the the mechanical cut to length systems where you have a harvester with a processing head and a forwarder as opposed to a skitter. So again, the trees are mechanically felled, topped, limbed, and bucked to length at the stump with either a rubber tired or track mounted harvester equipped with that processing head. Um, what, so then you have, instead of having a pile of, of trees with limbs and tops and everything on it, you have a pile of logs. The, um, the forwarder comes in behind the, the harvester and loads up uh, and loads the wood on the back of the on the back of the forwarder, and that you know that is what's driven out of the woods. And so all the limbs, all the tops stay uh, stay in the woods. And this is you know this is preferable for a, cu a couple of reasons. The main reason why the you know these cut to length systems um, are a pretty good deal uh, is because the machines end up driving on top of the slash that's created during the processing. If you can think about all those limbs and all those tops that are staying in the wood, they're staying in the woods, um, as opposed to the machines driving on bare mineral soil, which is the case with most of the other systems, these machines drive on top of the slash, on top of the debris, and so that's real. it really reduces the, the soil impact um, during harvesting. But as you can imagine, the capital investment is huge for something like this. Again, uh, I'd say six hundred thousand dollars is a is a low, a really low estimate. Um, you know, you, you may be you know you're looking closer to a million dollars likely. Everything everything accounted for. Uh, systems like this uh, originated in Scandinavia. You know, some of the uh, you know countries where they're doing a lot of conifer plantation management, where the goal is to be really efficient and really uniform. Um, but now it's, you know, cut-to-length systems are, are pretty common in a lot of parts in the United States. 
Uh, oddly enough, it, it hasn't really taken hold here in the southeastern United States, even though the majority of what's being cut are these, you know, softwood stands, these conifer plantations. Um, and so it's likely, uh, likely going to become more common over time. The last system that we're going to uh, look at is the cable yarding system. Again, more common in the Pacific Northwest, uh, but also becoming more becoming uh, common here in the the Southern Appalachians, particularly on federal federal land as well. In as I described a little bit earlier, um, you know the trees are manually felled typically because this is really steep ground we're talking about. You know, generally we're talking about really big trees, really steep ground. Uh, more often than not, the only thing that can cut these trees is is somebody with a chainsaw. So the trees are manually felled. They're um, you know delimbed and topped. Uh, often they're bucked at the stump, but sometimes sometimes they're not. You know, the the amount of processing in the woods varies. But the trees are cut. They're, let, you know, they're cut beforehand. Um, once all the trees in a unit are felled, um, they start, you know, they set up the the yarding system. And again, you have uh, logs attached by wire rope to cho wire rope chokers to a movable carriage that's suspended overhead. The yarder, you know, remember that big tower that sits on the that sits on the deck, uh, you know, has a winch on it and reels the carriage back in. To where the logs the, the logs are dropped off, the once they're on the deck, the logs are sorted by product. Any more processing that needs to occur is done up there as well, and they're loaded onto the truck and, and driven down the road. Again, it's really com you know it's a common set setup on really steep terrain, um, where you have pretty large wood that needs to be needs to be dealt with. As you can imagine, there is, in terms of overhead investment, this may be this type of system is is likely the largest, um, you know, excluding the helicopter system. Um, you know, definitely over a million dollars for all, once all the equipment's get accounted for. Um, common in the Pacific Northwest, as I just mentioned, getting used more in the Southern Appalachians, particularly on U.S. Forest Service land. The silviculture is relatively limited with this type of setup because you kind of need to work in a corridor. You know, you kind of need to work where that that tower is set up and where the the cable yarding system is set up. So it's you kind of have two options. You're either it's either a clear cut um, or it's a uniform thinning. Um, I think there you know there are also ways to um, to account for some amount of retention within the clear cut unit, but the more stuff that's left behind, the harder it is to cable things out. Um, so the so often the the silviculture can be a, a limit a little bit limited with this type of with this type of harvesting.